<laughs> you are not stronger than Christ. Get over here, man. Grab him. Grab him. You are not strong. No, you are not stronger than Christ. No, you are not stronger. <laughs> you are not stronger than Christ. Welcome to the Life Scope Channel. On your way in, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It's always appreciated. So, I saw an X space a couple of days ago where Daniel Ayoka's name was in the title. Now, this was a space hosted by an herbalist named Di Hu Ti. I have heard of him before, which is another reason I went into the space. But, I have to admit it was a lot of Matrix decoding talk and less Danielle Johnson talk. When I was reading the comments, people were saying that Danielle's mother was in the space, but Dahudi didn't know how to bring her up. So I didn't stay in the space too long, but I really wanted to hear a perspective about Ayoka from someone like him, since people, including Dahudi, are saying Danielle was possessed. Now, a lot of people are just chopping up Danielle's actions to either going crazy or mental illness. Imagine waking up one day only to find yourself not in control of your own body. A chilling prospect, isn't it? This is the eerie reality of possession, a phenomena that has perplexed, terrified, and fascinated mankind for centuries. Our journey begins in the ancient times where the earliest records of possession emerged from the cradle of civilization, Mesopotamia. Here, symptoms we associate today with mental illness were often ascribed to malevolent spirits. Priests conducted elaborate rituals to exorcise these entities and restore the afflicted individual to health. Fast forward to ancient Greece. The Greeks believed in the concept of demon possession, invisible beings influencing human behavior. Even the great philosopher Socrates claimed to have a demon that guided his actions. Now, let's travel to the Middle Ages. A time of fear and superstition, when the church wielded immense power, possession became synonymous with witchcraft and demonic influence. Thousands suffered brutal exorcisms or worse, were condemned as witches and executed. Next, we step into the Enlightenment era. As science and reason took center stage, possession was increasingly viewed as a symptom of mental illness, rather than supernatural intervention. Yet the belief in demonic possession persisted, especially among the deeply religious. In the 20th century, Possession captured the public imagination, like never before. The 1973 horror classic, The Exorcist, portrayed a young girl possessed by a demon, a tale that continues to terrify audiences even today. Today, in the 21st century, possession remains a contentious issue. Medical professionals regard it as a psychological phenomenon, often linked to conditions like schizophrenia or dissociative identity disorder. On the other hand, many religious and spiritual groups still firmly believe in the reality of demonic possession. So what have we learned from this journey through time? Possession, once attributed to supernatural entities, is increasingly seen through the lens of science and psychology. Yet the belief in demons and spirits continues to endure, a testament to the enduring power of folklore and religion. Whether you view possession as a chilling supernatural phenomena or a complex psychological condition, there's no denying its significant impact on human history. From ancient Mesopotamia to modern-day horror films, the concept of possession has fascinated and terrified us in equal measure. Does the spirit world truly have the power to seize control of our bodies, or are these simply the manifestations of troubled minds? The answer, it seems, depends on who you ask. And so, the enigma of possession continues to perplex us, a chilling reminder of the mysteries that lie beyond our understanding. In the wake of everything that happened last week, many people are calling Daniel Ayoka a bad mother, which I definitely agree with. However, some are saying that she may have been suffering from postpartum depression, 
I don't know or haven't heard of a situation where you can still suffer from that after you've already had kids, but anything is possible. Now, at first I was going to lean towards Danielle maybe being taken over by something unexplained, because that can actually happen. For instance, think of serial killers that say they hear voices or the ones that get into demonic rituals. One serial killer in particular, Jeffrey Dahmer, showed signs early that something wasn't socially right with him. As far as his bio, Dahmer's parents didn't physically harm him. He wasn't molested by any adults or bullied in school to where he was just a complete outcast. So, how did he turn out the way that he did? Watching the movie Exorcist 3 was also part of his ritual. It put him in the mood for murder. I felt so hopelessly uh, evil and perverted that, uh, that I, I actually derived a sort of pleasure from watching that tape. Did you like feeling evil? No. No, I didn't, but uh, I had tried to overcome the thoughts, and it worked for a while, but eventually I gave in. While Jeffrey Dahmer and, may uh, say things today that make it seem like he understands what went on in his mind, he does not. All he can do is tell you what happened, but he cannot stop whatever it is that drove him to kill in the first place. Do you still feel those same urges? Do you still feel that compulsion, that obsession? Uh, I wish I could say that uh, it just left completely, but uh, no, there are times when I still do, still do have uh, the old compulsions. Jeffrey Dahmer says as time went on, his mind became more and more warped, and yet he was clever enough to continue to elude police and lure young men to his apartment. In a quote-unquote normal modern society, it's hard for us to understand when people have a mental breakdown, so we try to rationalize what is the logical explanation. Dahmer had to ramp up his evil state of mind by watching the exorcist as he gave in to his dark desires. But once again, who or what was behind him wanting to seek, kill, and destroy? Is it possible that we don't want to believe that some people that commit heinous acts can indeed be under a demonic influence? However, that doesn't mean every person that has ever committed a crime gets to use that excuse that the devil made me do it. Just like with anything else in life, there are levels to mental illness being considered crazy, and maybe even possession. Let's take a quick look at the famous clip where one of Dahmer's victims' sister has a very real reaction to him in court. She was so overcome with emotion uh, when she came, as she says face to face with evil at Jeffrey Dahmer's sentencing, that she threatened to kill him and was dragged out of the courtroom. Never, Jeffrey! Jeffrey, I hate you! That's real. Rita Isbell, the sister of Errol Lindsay, joins us now remotely. She says watching portions of Monster on Netflix left her feeling like she was reliving her worst nightmare. Uh, Rita, it's an honor to meet you. Same here. I'm just ooh, listening to the two gentlemen. It just blew my mind. That lets me know that I was right the whole time when I was in front of him, Dr. Phil. I felt it. You felt the presence of evil when you were with I him. I felt it. I felt it. Yeah. I had no idea. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. Just talk through the tears. What, what did you feel like? What did you feel a presence when you looked him in the eye? Don't always face to face with Satan himself.
Now, I don't want to get too far off track, but again, I use Dahmer as an example of evil personified. And when it comes to Danielle, I don't know if I believe she was possessed during her mental breakdown. It was said that she was into a lot of dark spiritual practices. In my opinion, if you don't have discernment or are messing with things that removes the everyday veil, be careful that it doesn't drive you crazy. Ask yourself, have you ever experienced something that was unexplainable, good or bad? When I talked about the time how I almost astro projected out of my body as an adult, I mentioned that it felt like a roller coaster ride in terms of the excitement of the moment. I wasn't scared, however. It caught me off guard that I did think for a second, which I didn't share in the video. Can something else take over my body while I'm traveling? But you know, Jenny, it's so troubling to see that witchcraft and the occult uh, is really on the rise. I mean, we're seeing it in stores. We're seeing clothing promoting, hey, I'm a good witch or I'm a bad witch, you know. Right. Uh, we're seeing uh, even witches having workshops and retreats and all these things. Why do you think this has become so much more mainstream, so much more acceptable? I think media has done a a good job of pushing something to the point where it is now normalized. Now I felt like I had that thought because more than likely something like that can be a reality. I've only astral projected once in my life when I was a child in church. I was going to a funeral at my home church with my mama and it was so crowded that we had to sit in the choir stand. I was so sleepy because I had stayed up late the night before to where I was falling asleep during the prayer. So as the pastor was praying, my head starts really dipping low and somehow I was able to see myself asleep. I was looking down from the ceiling off over in the corner on the right side of the church. If I could draw, it would be a beautiful picture. Mostly everybody was in black with their heads down. Then it was like a big hand made in the form of air had pulled all the way back. Like if it was a physical hand, it would hurt if it hit me, but it didn't. So the hand hits me and I sat up quick, wide awake, looking around because I was back in my body. It felt like all of this took some time, but when I was up, the pastor was still praying. I was about 10 years old, so I didn't tell anyone about that experience until I got grown. It was just something I kept to myself, and although I know it was real, for a split second I thought maybe I was dreaming in church. So I said all of that to say that there is no question for me that good and bad spirits exist, and people can be influenced by it. So keep on playing with the wrong thing and see what happens. Although I don't pray nowhere near like I used to, it's important to stay prayed up to fight off certain influences. Anyway, let me know what you think and have you ever had an experience that didn't make sense? Don't forget to support the channel. Until next time.